my check one two one two it is the y2k collector and we did it folks we've hit three thousand subscribers shout out to all of you amazing and wonderful uh youtubers uh viewers and fellow youtubers alike it is a beautiful day it's the first day of may and uh, i'm gonna talk a little bit about uh some of the different uh hunting options out there this summer and uh what i'm gonna be keeping my eye on based on the current changes in market values on some of these games but before i do that i'm gonna incorporate something that i want to do with each video that i put out each morning and that's going to be me responding to some of the comments that i get um within the last 24 hours so I'll be taking some time to just kind of go through some of the comments that I get. And this is something that I kind of want to do on a daily basis. I think it'll give everyone a chance for their voice to be heard. So before we start talking about uh, some of the hunting stuff, I'm going to kick it off with some comments. So um, Afrophysicist3143 um, commented on a video I put out, um, the one titled Gaming After the Age of 25 Gets Lonely. So he responded to that video by saying, Currently experiencing something similar. I am 30 and a full-time student working on a PhD. I also work. Video games will never get old for me and one of my close friends since seventh grade is still a gamer and exclusively plays single player. I grew up poor and now that I have some money, I can usually buy what I want. I like single player and multiplayer games, but man, I missed out in middle school and high school and somewhat even college. When everyone had PS3 or 360, I just got a PS2. I did not get to experience playing games online with my friends in high school, and now almost none of them play anymore. So first off, Afrophysicist, thank you for that comment. Um, and yeah, I mean, this pretty much reminds me of a place that I was in a few years ago where, you know, you're, you're just turning 30 and you're wanting to go back to some of the games that you played as a kid or maybe some of the games that you and your friends played growing up um but a lot of them have either moved on and gone on to other things now um it's it's funny because you know for you um i guess your heyday was the playstation 3 or the 360 era for me my heyday was actually the n64 dreamcast ps2 era so um, I actually would have been happy to have a PS2, but I definitely understand where you're coming from in terms of missing out on certain experiences and um, wanting to kind of get some of those opportunities back. I mean, my recommendation um, for you, if, you know, doing, you know, kind of getting back with your friends and getting back into gaming is something you want to do, all it really takes is one friend. So if you're close at all with any of those friends, or if you, not even close, but if you've been able to make contact or keep contact with any of those friends from high school, all it really takes is one friend for you to be able to have that experience, whether it be online or maybe even just kind of getting together. I remember there was a time right when I was turning 30 that I accidentally ran into one of my old high school friends and, um, you know, we had some light conversation and I wound up asking him if he still played Marvel versus Capcom 2. And he was like, you know, man, it's been forever. But he was, you know, he made a joke. He's like, I bet you I could kick your butt. And, you know, I was like, well, you know what? I bet you you can't. And from that, we just decided to buy a Dreamcast, um, get an extra copy of Marvel versus Capcom 2. And we made it almost a weekly routine to get together um, and play Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And that actually morphed. Um, not only did we get together and play video games, but we got together and we exchanged business ideas. We shared dreams. We shared thoughts. We talked about some of the things that we had gone through, you know, over the past decade. And, you know, we, we were able to bond over that game. So um, once you kind of hit your 30s, I think that games become an avenue for you to build community and commune. Um, with people that you may have lost touch with. So um, yeah, you might've missed out in high school Afrophysicist, but um, there's never, uh, it's, you know, it's never too late for you to reconnect with some of those old friends and make new memories. Will it be the same as what it was maybe back in, I don't know, 20, 
I, I can't even remember how old the PS3 is at this point, but I'm thinking that goes back to like 07, 08, 09. Maybe that was your heyday. Um, but you know what? You still can enjoy a lot of those games, especially PlayStation, because they've remade so many of those PS3 games. But it starts with you reaching out to those friends of yours and setting a date to get together and, you know, not have a play date. I hate the way that sounds, but you know, making time for you guys to get together and play some video games. But thank you for the comment. I appreciate it. Um, next comment here is from Adam Mac 3649. He says, I'm 40 years old and I've been a gamer since NES. I was picked on my whole childhood. I was called a nerd, loser, all that. At some point as a child, I stopped caring about what others thought and stopped, uh, and stopped caring since. At 40, I care even less what people think. And this was a comment in response to a video that I put out um, titled The Social Stigma of Being a Gamer in Your 30s and 40s. And you know what? Um, if he's 40 years old, that means he grew up in the 90s. And in the 90s, being a gamer definitely was not cool. Um, if you were a gamer, especially like if you were an avid gamer and you talked about video games and you tried to share that excitement with your friends, nine times out of 10, you were going to get clowned because in the 90s, I mean, think about what was popular in the 90s, um, depending on where you grew up, right? Um, certain bands were popular in the 90s. Um, certain rappers were popular in the 90s. Um, football, basketball, you think about sports and athletes. You, now you're thinking about Michael Jordan, Air Jordans. Um, and you're thinking about some of the movies that kind of um, helped to steer pop culture back then. And video games were just weren't as mainstream as they are today. So, uh, Adam, I definitely get what you're saying, and I think you took the right approach. You know, caring what other people think is really going to get you nowhere in life. Um, unfortunately, in some cases, for some people, perception is reality. And a lot of times people will interact with you based on how they perceive you. Um, but there's there's little, you know, there are some things that you can do to control perception, but changing who you are and you know and being fake isn't one of them so shout outs to you adam for being true to who you are hopefully you're living a happy and productive life at this point all right i think i have time for maybe a couple more so we have richard foster uh i think this is richard foster ll uh 7575 he says uh or he said i'm 41 years old and i have a pretty good size collection 1800 or so games and 30 I'm, I'm assuming he said i'm assuming he means games but he says 1800 or so and 35 consoles i don't feel i am judged for most part but few people at work are like you can't play all those games most people in their 60s for me i married with two kids and i had a collection when we met but it was about 96 games and i only had a ps2 and a ps3 i got hardcore in collecting in 2018 great video and i love your topics he then goes on to say um though then he commented on a, on another video regarding um how locations um impact your ability to collect and he says i live in lake or orion michigan and it's it is getting harder to find games at thrift stores they sell them online even a few years ago i found games all the time i resell and find it hard to find anything to flip i'm a collector too as well I have a secondhand store, a secondhand I have a secondhand store, second in Charles, and it it's a mile from my house. I have bought over a thousand games from them since 2018, but just found a game store 15 minutes from me, but priced usually higher than price charting. But garage sale and flea market is where I find the best deals. Great topic. So shout out to you, Richard Foster. Uh, thank you for your, both of your comments. Um, first off you're a great example of someone who's able to balance i guess a social life a productive healthy family life <clears throat> while while successfully maintaining the hobby of gaming um your wife hasn't thrown you out yet <laughs> for having 1800 games um and 35 consoles so you got to be doing something right um and hopefully um your children are able to enjoy your games as much as you do i'm sure family game night must be a blast and then with regards to uh, Michigan. I'm very familiar with Michigan. I did a few internships in Michigan, um, and uh, this would have been in the uh, in the uh, uh, Sterling Township area of Michigan. And um, you know, I remember when I was in in Sterling Township, 
um, or I think it was Washington Township, I can't remember. Um, at that time, there were a lot of like retro thrift stores, but I wasn't, at that time, I wasn't heavy into gaming, but I'm sure I missed out on a ton of deals at that time because, you know, it was, it was just crazy at that time, especially, you know, 08, 09, things like that. I mean, you, you had, that was when we were in a great recession. So prices on everything was dropping. So if you collected around that time, you probably got a lot of good deals, but, um, yeah, it's getting hard everywhere. Um, it's getting hard. Um, from what I'm seeing, a lot of my thrift stores, um, they're not even at the price charting level at this point. Thrift stores in my area are selling well above price charting. They have this inflated sense of value on video games. Um, and it's just crazy to see um, where things have gone from a thrift store perspective. I mean, I, I just don't get it. I could understand <clears throat> a reseller reselling video games at exaggerated prices because that's what they do they're resellers but at the end of the day goodwill is still goodwill like you're supposed to be goodwill i don't understand how you're a thrift store if you're selling video games for higher prices than retail that just defeats the purpose of you being a goodwill and at this point it doesn't really like look like you're trying to spread goodwill it looks like you're trying to you know generate profits and that kind of just is kind of anti what you're supposed to be. Again, resellers, we know what resellers are trying to do. They're trying to resell games at higher prices for a profit. Despite what's happening in the gaming market, despite what's going on with video game values, if I'm not mistaken, Goodwill still has a a, a credo, a company motto, uh, a non-for-profit, uh, you know, uh, mindset that they have to live by which is they're there to to serve and service the underprivileged and those who cannot afford so when i go online and i see a nintendo 64 for 169 dollars and they're trying to sell video games at dk oldies prices to me it just completely defeats the purpose of what goodwill is supposed to be i get it maybe they don't want anyone else to profit on these items but if that's the case, then you should get out of the business of Goodwill and you guys should just become resellers because you can't call yourself Goodwill if you're selling games at prices higher than retail or at prices that are matching DK Oldies. That just doesn't make sense to me. But either in either case, thank you, Richard Foster. I appreciate you commenting. Um, great thoughts, great opinions. I appreciate you sharing. All right, I'm going to do one more uh, comment, and then I'll just give some of my thoughts here real quick. So we have another comment here from uh, Zombie38, and he says, I'm 56, married, and a grandpa, and I still mainly play Genesis, NES, SNES, PS1, PS2, Dreamcast, and GameCube. The new stuff does not call much of my attention. <clears throat> I put my grandkids to play the classics, and they really love it especially Sonic and Mario games. And this is um, a comment that he made in response to the social stigma of being a gamer in your 30s and 40s. So, you know, Zombie, thank you for the comment. Um, yeah, this is something that I would want as well, right? To when, when I get to that age, my 50s, my 60s, if I have grandchildren, I wanna expose them to some of these games and some of these consoles because I think the simplicity of older games makes them more fun to me, to me. The less troubleshooting you have to do to get a game started and start playing it and enjoying it, to me, makes it all the more fun. I can't remember who commented, but they commented, you know, they said retro games, plug, play. And then they said modern games, uh, plug, turn on, insert disc, wait for disc to download, after download, wait for patches to update, after patches update, you know, <clears throat> connect to network. And they were kind of making... I'm assuming they were kind of making a joke, but it's true. You have to go through so many steps to play modern games that it's like, dude, what happened to just plug and play? And um, that's really what I'm about. And I think no matter what generation you're in, simplicity is always going to win, especially when it comes to younger children. They want to just put the game in and play it. They don't want to have to jump through a million hoops. So, but again, I guess that's kind of the consequence of gaming um starting to cater to an older audience as well as gaming um you know just advancing and um you know the 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 driver of the sales being more towards in-game purchases as well as downloads and things like that 
All right, so thank you for the comments, everyone. Comments, uh, my reaction to comments won't always be this long every day. Some days I may read more, some days I may read less, um, but I definitely wanted to just kick off the first of the month with some really cool comments that I got within the last 24 hours. Now, looking at these games down here, these are systems that I'm actually gonna be looking to um, build my collection around. Um, I've gotten the bulk of the heavy hitters that I want for the Dreamcast, so I'm not really looking there. Same thing with PlayStation, but I, there are some bangers on the Sega Genesis that I will be trying to keep an eye out for. Alyssa Dragoon is one of them. And then I'm also thinking about adding to my Neo Geo Pocket Collection. Um, they don't have to be complete in box. I just so happen to run into a $100 copy of Metal Slug Second Mission, um, which I had to get because um, this was just a steal for me. Um, this game at the time was going for around 250. I don't know what Metal Slug Second Edition complete in box goes for now. This box is a little bit damaged, so I'm assuming that's why they sold it for 100. But the cartridge itself still goes for around 100. So to get it with the manual and everything was cool. But I am gonna be looking for some more Metal Slug, not Metal Slug, but for some more Neo Geo Pocket games. Real peculiar with some of the titles that I'm gonna go for though. Um, in terms of the PlayStation 1, there are some, still out there um i got a lot of the ones that i want but there are a few um that i'm looking for and then as many of you know i did have the snes challenge that i was trying to go for this summer but i mean if i would have bought all the games that i had my eyes on it would have amounted to the thousands and to me a new bathroom was worth more than some uh super nintendo games um but here's the thing and i'll, I'll end off with this the prices are actually changing on a lot of this stuff the market it has settled down. I don't even want to say it's settling down. The market has settled, in my opinion. A lot of the prices that we're seeing have been the same for the last six months to a year. I haven't seen much fluctuation in games. And even if a game dips or shoots up in price to any degree, what I'm seeing is that it's normalizing very quickly. So you might have one or two sales here that where a game sells for abnormally high or abnormally low, but in general, these prices have stabilized. And in some cases, they are trickling down. So, you know, that that poses the question that I want to kind of give out to the viewers today. Do you think now is the time to buy or do you think there's still room for prices to drop? Do you think prices will ultimately end up dropping this year? Or do you think that we'll start to see them creep back up? I'm interested to know because we always want to know when the best time to buy is especially when you're a game collector. But that does it for me this morning. It's the Y2K Collector. Thanks again to the 3K subs. You all rock. And I will be back with you this afternoon for another video. Take it easy.